Tonight's DJ and TV show are sponsored by the following. DJ Event Planner. Electro Voice. Max Photo Booth and DJ Booth Design. DJ Trivia and DJ Bingo. Pro X Direct. Anal Effects Professional. Promo Only. Odyssey Cases. Perfect Portals. JMOS Lighting. And Instant DJ Requests. Along with the DJ and TV insiders at DJNTVtraining.com. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. It's Monday night. We're here. We're all together. It it feels like it's forever. I can actually see you guys. It's awesome. <laughs> it feels a, like forever. <laughs> seen you. It is a thing, isn't it? Huh? it it's it been a bit of a roller coaster for schedules and all kinds of stuff, hasn't it? Yeah, it has just, been. Just, just a little. A little just bit. a little. But we're back. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but we are. But we are. Much. Uh, I, you know, I think they survived. I think they survived. There was a, there was a good there was a good replay last Monday, and and uh, Howie's the man just holding it down for us in like every other hour of the day. Uh, the boy does not sleep. I swear he he doesn't. He's just he he like eats and does DJ and TV. That's it. That's all he does. It's all it's all Howie all the time. And speaking of Howie, uh, he'll be on after our show tonight at ten at ten o'clock Eastern, and he's going to have a. Uh, uh, Trevor coming in from uh, Australia, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, what what business is like down there, how things are going down there. So that'd be kind of a fun interview. If you guys have ever uh, been in there when Scrap has been into the chill room, djntv.com slash chill. Uh, this is this is a night to uh, get to meet him if you've never met him before. And if you have, it'll be kind of a fun night to, uh, to learn a little bit about what uh, DJing is like in that uh, part of the world compared to, you know, middle of the country USA. Here yeah, they have to stand on board. their heads. Yeah. They do. They do. Because the songs uh, are played this way. He has some good stories. All joking aside, he has some good stories and what's required down there. It's different than us here in the United States and Canada and different places. So definitely worth tuning into. So before we get into the topic tonight, uh, let's. Uh, there's a couple of things that I wanted to just throw out uh, for those out there watching. Um, first off is... You guys have heard about the the whole thing in Singapore and, and such when it comes to how that's affecting supply chain. Well, initially, before that part of happened and before whatever whatever other things happened here, we were thinking that summer of 2022, our supply chain of DJ gear was going to start to improve. Well, not only is it not going to improve, it's going to get a lot worse between now and uh, and the end of the year. There are many manufacturers who basically have just written off 2022 as a, we're not getting anything, so we're going into uh, survival mode. So what that means for you out there as, as DJ end user is that if you are needing gear for your fall homecoming dances, you need to be ordering it now because some companies will be getting some things in, they hope, in September. Some companies will be getting something in by April of next year, um, maybe the first time they see gear. But if you're needing something, you're going to probably have to do some kind of poking around and seeing who thinks they can they can either have it in stock or when they can get it. And as much as you know, you guys know that, that Ben and NLFX Pro are are you know they uh, with us and big sponsors of the show and such. Sometimes there's going to be things that they can't get, and it's not their fault. It's just the way things work. Big the big companies in our the big uh, retailers. They can kind of get things first once in a while, and as much as it stinks, you might have to uh, be a little flexible. And this is one of the few times I'd say that you're going to have to shop around instead of just going right to Ben. But it's just their hands are tied. There's nothing they can do, and they want you to be able to get have the tools to do that what you need to do. So it's uh, it's going to be a tough a tough time. And I think our our trip to DJ Expo here in August is going to be 
I think disappointing. Not that it won't, it, the show itself will, you know, we'll, we'll, there will be friends and things there, but we were hoping to see the return of gear and the return of new gear. And I don't think we're going to see that. There might be one or two, but there won't be 20, you know, 10 or 20. And that's what we were hoping for. So just one thing to, I would also say is, you know, don't take it out on the people that are, that are doing the sales, because I can guarantee you there is no retailer out there that is going to go, I'm not going to sell to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, like, like, I'm sorry. If you're reaching out to buy product and you're like, and you don't, if they tell you they don't have it, it's not because they want to sell it to like their warehouse. They, they want to, they want to move anything that they can because it's all more money coming in for their pocket pockets, which they need right now. Um, so, you know, do not, you do not, I, I saw some different posts where, you know, people were taking it out on different companies. Like, again, it's completely out of their control. Um, they, they are not doing it to you on purpose. I promise. Yeah. And, and it comes from the, it's the manufacturers, but even the, in the manufacturer side, but they can't get things here, no matter what they want to do, they can't get it here because the plants that make the stuff are in some cases shut down, still shut down. And then from there they have to come back and then they have to build and then they have to get it boxed and shipped and, you know, all these different aspects of it before it gets here. So there's a lot of things and they just aren't coming together. How often do we buy a uh, question? Uh, how often do you buy new gear? Um, generally every year for my <laughs> speaking for myself here is I, I sp spend between two and $5,000 a year is kind of my gear budget. So this year um, I added, um, I added some new Bluetooth lights that will be coming. They were supposed to be here in March. I will maybe see them by the end of summer because of the delays. Um, I bought some, um, I uh, bought a couple of subwoofers. They were supposed to be in February, and I ended up having to do exactly what I was just saying. I, I had to go to a third uh, or a different spot than where I was going to initially get them because I needed to have them for uh, for shows. So um, after several months of waiting and hoping that they would they would appear from uh, the company, they didn't. So I had to go and find them where I could find them. But most of the gear, I mean, Dan, when's the last time you had a piece of gear die in you? I've been very lucky. You now that you say that I'm going to be I'm going to be screwed this weekend. Um, <laughs> You're it's, welcome. It's, it's been a long time since I've had anything since I've had anything quit on me. Um, I've had some I've had buttons go bad. That that's always seems to be my problem. So where I can make it way I can make my way through it, but it's not ideal. Um, I've never had anything quit quit on me completely. And it's been yeah I've had some little things like uh, like that. Uh, as, as a mobile DJ, something doesn't work, you make it through it and then you replace it. But that piece of gear was probably with me from four or five years minimum. I mean, I really, there, there isn't too much that has been, unless I bought something on the cheap and this has happened, you know, that there was this, you know, light that I saw that I thought, oh, this will be really cool. At, uh, I remember we bought it from the local, uh, my local uh, shop down, uh, down in St. Cloud. It's like, this is going to be awesome for our high school dances. And it was a, it was a knockoff version of the Vertigo. But it was cheaper than the Vertigo, so I was going to buy it and save money. You know, it probably made it like two minutes into the show, and then that was that was the end of it. And that one, yeah. So most of the stuff has been very good. MJ, how often do you do you change your uh, your, your gear out? <laughs> I've got like twelve comments I want to comment on. Uh, the first thing, like John, I also have a two to five thousand dollar budget, but mine's for junk food, and it's monthly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. And that's how Kimmy keeps his, his figure. So, well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's right. Um, I, I think the only piece of gear I've ever had go bad is I had a Korg chaos pad, which is a, an effects oh, yeah. unit go bad once. And I was actually the second owner of it. So that, and like Dan, I've also had several buttons on several different devices go from time to time. I had a channel on a device go. Uh, it's, it wasn't a complete, like Dan said, it isn't a complete, but you can get through the night. Um, so uh, it's, it's, I tend to get a controller every two years. This time it was three. It wasn't necessarily because there wasn't anything, you know, it just, it was a timing thing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was looking, um, I'm going to be honest. I was looking for Denon to come out with a regular controller as opposed to the standalones and they're just not. So that's why I had to switch to the rain. Cause I, I did not want the standalones. I, I wasn't a fan of them. I may adopt them in the future. I'm not saying never, but right now what they had, I just didn't want. And then I switched, um, 
But usually on stuff like that, every couple of years, I've had my speakers for like eight years because uh, like not like John and Dan, I don't have to go out and do as many gigs as they do. So my QSCs have really, you know, they've done well. But I do have a thing with cords, um, XLR cords. I always keep XLR cords around because I would say several times a year I have stuff go bad on me mm-hmm. and I'm just not one to kind of fuss with it. Um, I just toss it and grab a new one. Sure. You know, no big deal. I have this thing, if I'm somewhere and it goes bad, I tie it in knots so that I never use it. Like, just in case I throw it back in the bag, (laughs) you know, I'm like, oh, I don't want to throw it away here. Immediately, I tie knots in it and and put it aside. Um, But yeah, so. And to, uh, I want to also face this, Chris in the chat room saying guitar won't sell Rev 7s. They will sell anything if they have them, but they won't sell them to you if they have previous orders standing for them. Ah, okay. So if they have five guitar, five Rev 7s there, and they have five orders that people placed already, they're going to go to them, not to you. So that that's the you know the orders because I can go in because as a, as a guitar center I teach uh, DJ classes for guitar center and I can go in and look at stuff and I can see how many are sitting in the warehouse and how many orders that they have to fill uh, and that's not even going to the stores to sell and you will see something like 50 items 200 uh, uh, items to fill orders to fill so hmm. it's it's just you know it, right now it's tough uh, I was going to say when John was talking about you know gear I was going to say, as a DJ teacher, I think we all need to get comfortable DJing with just a laptop because there may come a point where we, that's all we're going to have is our laptops to DJ with. You never know. Yeah. I was Jokingly. I, I, it's funny you mention that. That was part of my Saturday is, is uh, I had to do ceremony and I was going to use a controller, but I was using it with a laptop that didn't connect with the controller properly. So I'm running virtual DJ off my, my MacBook Air and having to do the crossfader with the the click on the mouse, and then to bring adjust volumes and do all this and click play, and you know, it's like, man, I wish I would have spent time and if nothing else, got keystrokes down. If, if set up a right right deck play and a left deck play keystroke or something. Well, there is a shortcut in, and I can never remember what it is that will bring up what the keystrokes are. So it'll bring up an on screen display of the keystrokes, like like Control Alt Y or something like that. And, the, and you can always use them. I can't remember what it is. I always have to look it up. But if you ever get into that point and you're using virtual and you need to, just look up online what that shortcut is. And like I said, on your screen, it will pop up a little keyboard off the side showing you what the play is. shortcuts, the the beat matches, the cro- auto crossfaders, everything is there. Mm-hmm. Now that would have been Nudge so, buttons. so nice to have because I was... I was using the Roland, uh, the Roland 707 as my ceremony f- for that. And I usually use it with my MacBook Pro. And they're fine and they work wonderfully together. But the MacBook Air, for some reason, didn't recognize it. It just said it was a USB device mm. and that didn't... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that didn't go. It's not going to cut it. Yeah, not so much. Not so much. It's like, okay. Ah. And then nothing lights up. I don't know. Is the mic on? Is the mic off? I don't know. I just can't tell. It's not lit up. Yeah, a moment of we feel that way when that when that stuff like that happens. We, we feel like cr- cr- balling up in the corner and crying. Yeah, it's like you know, I was so I thought I was so prepared, but I thought to myself, well, you know, I can just leave my main laptop inside where they, you know, everyone's going to go after the ceremony, and I can just do the ceremony with it. Oh, it'll be fine. I would advise people to get a if you can get a small, cheap, even if it's one of the small under hundred dollar Newmark or. Um, Hercules mini controllers for things just like that, for volume and play buttons. But that's something you can carry with you all the time. Make sure, you know, obviously first, make sure it works. But always, because like even when I go out and do gigs, I have that new mark that um, the bigger one, I said, has the same layout as mm-hmm. the, the rain. It always goes in the car with the rest of the gear now. So just in case something craps out, I get an extra call for something, whatever, it's there. So if you can get a little used one, spend that money. It's worth to have just that. I'm telling you, that little thing, it's so nice to have a... It's crazy how well it works for the size and the price. Yeah. It, it really does. Um, yeah, I was using it. I forget what I was even using it for. It was just kind of, one again, one of those things where I just wanted to have something. I didn't want to I didn't want to keystroke it. And and I was, I hooked that. Oh, I know what it was. I was, I was just doing a, um, like a, a charity walk and I didn't want to bring everything. So I took the computer, I set the little the little device in front of it and then went right into my mixer and like it's just a, a it's not a controller mixer just a mixer and then, then that was it and everything else was just back and forth back and forth and I didn't have to worry about it it was so much easier. Yeah. 
Um, and, and doing- just just to throw it out there, yeah. SB3 is one of the ones I, I, I keep to teach classes because that's kind of a different thing. There are so many SB3s out there. It's not even funny. So you can get a deal on a used one mm-hmm. really easy. With It has a mic. I think it has a mic, right? I, I it think has it, a mic. Yeah, I think it has a mic, yeah. Yeah, it has a mm-hmm. mic, and that that will get you. That push comes to shove. That will give you the things you need, and it's no power extra. You run it off the laptop, everything. So, so we Go got ahead. a few more questions that are floating through. So let's hit those, and we'll we'll get to and talk about because we've already made allu- allu- alluding to some of the ways that we're hauling gear. But we'll get to that. Uh, uh, ah. One of the one, um, fa- from Facebook here. Um, are you guys seeing uh, business getting better? They're in Northern California, and their DJ friends are getting busy again, um, but they're not knowing how the business is going to go. And they're, they're a little leery about spending um, money on gear right now. If it's something's going to happen again. Um, so, so from yeah. where I'm at, things seem to be the, the events that are happening, the frequency that they're happening, they're a little smaller, but otherwise they're what they were kind of pre COVID as far as frequency and, and type, I guess a little smaller. Some groups just are still not coming out. Um, and, and then some people, because of having to pull back on their own finances for two years, are not inviting as many people yes. because of, of paying, at least for the from the wedding standpoint. Um, but you know, to to what John said, I can understand the concern for you know not wanting to spend gear for fear of the money from the events. However, if you know. I, this is where I would say, you know, try and set something up with who you're purchasing from to where it doesn't come out until it ships, if that's an option, um, to, you know, until, until you're, so in other words, you place the order now, put you in that, put you in that queue. And then if it's six months, 10 months, a year before it ships, you're in line and the money's not out until it until it comes up, but you have to make sure you earmark for your own safe <laughs> safety so that in a year you don't go, why did suddenly a thousand dollars come out of my account? Um, because then you got a different situation. But if you're not in line, if you're not set up for that, that gear, when you decide you want to get it, it might not be an option. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things let's talk a little bit about, um, about how, how COVID is affecting. And Dan mentioned, of course, that some of the events are smaller, I'm definitely seeing that around, um, around minnesota in our our area the event i did saturday night had anticipated 120 and there were 80 people who basically were there for the dinner part of it that is probably going to be one of my biggest events for the season it's just that there's not as many uh, big big events they're most are under 100 right now but even with that um there were 80 people there excuse me there were 80 people who came for the ceremony they had seating for 120 then 20 of those 80 left before the dinners and the ceremony was outside. So it's becoming a smaller thing because of people's comfort. They were comfortable being outside in this situation. And we also have, uh, you know, every 10th person in our area, every fifth person, whatever has come down with COVID recently, it's got, it's going through our area pretty well. Uh, so there were, there's concerns and some people are just not going to be there. My son is getting married in two weeks and, uh, and we've got people who are, are saying, you know, yeah, we're just probably getting to, you know, see them this summer sometime, you know, when, they, when we can see them outdoors, there's concerns because of their health, whatever. So I think you're going to see that playing, but I don't think it's going to change. The events are going to happen unless you are that unfortunate person that has a, either the bride or the groom gets sick or someone really close like that. Otherwise, I think the events are going to go. There's going to be some guests who don't make it. It's just the way it's going to be. The big thing I think we as entertainers need to be aware of is that we need to have a plan B and a plan C. And we just about had that situation last week because Michael and I were both uh, scheduled to go out. And Michael calls on Monday morning and says, Dad, my throat is my throat's killing me and I've, my tonsils are swollen and I feel like crap and I can't. Whatever. He's going through all these things that are kind of symptoms of the, the latest version of COVID. And we had COVID in the back of our house uh, a week earlier. So there's a, there was a huge concern that, oh, crud, if he's got COVID and he can't perform, and I was he and I were together the weekend before. Then where is this going to lead? So we have our our typical plan, which would be if one of us is sick. Unfortunately, that means that Lori's going to get moved into working. She and one of the the uh, kids are going to have to go and and fill in for if they can. And if not, I had DJ friends lined up, so I had Plan B and Plan C lined up. But I think this is something that's going to become a new reality: is that we can't just 
you know, have a plan one backup. It's gonna we're gonna have to have multiple backups, and in some cases they have to be backups outside our family. And we've talked a little about this, but I think the reality is this is gonna hit you and hit you quick, unfortunately. Make a seg. There's more questions coming in out here on or, yeah, <laughs> corporate work. Somebody's asking about cor corporate work. Uh, I, I've seen some people who are doing some corporate things. I personally don't do much of that anymore because uh, I, well, I should say I've got one corporate event this summer that I'll be doing. Um, it seems that those who are doing corporate work are doing more than just the old, where they would just do like maybe some sound and uh, and in such for a, a meeting of 150, 200 people. They're having to do th a combination of sound and uh, streaming. It seems to be a really a still a really big thing for a lot of these corporate events because some people are making it, some are not. So um, it's there. It's uh, become, I think, in my view, I think it's become uh, even more competitive. And if, unless you're going to invest the money to be doing it at a high level, I don't think that coming in and doing a, I don't want to call it a, an average job, but I think if you come in there and you're trying to do something on um, a little bit cheaper or less expensive, it's probably not going to, you may get a one-off here, one-off there, but it's not going to be something that you're busy every week. You've got to be, you know, have the gear, have the quality cameras, have the computers that can handle streaming and multiple camera angles, having the microphones that feed into the system and everything's got to work and work well because they can do it themselves on Zoom and get average results. They're gonna hire a company who can give them stellar results. And if you're that company and you've got the tools invested in, I think there's business for you. If you don't have the tools or don't know how to run the tools properly, yeah, you're, you're, it's not a good area for you. I would also say from the, you know, and, and Mikey might kind of reference this. He says he's got a company party coming up. I know um, things got a little weird in our area. So you talked about, you know, COVID really running through your area right now. Back in December, that kind of happened around our area. And I had a company party lined up um, for a small, like appliance furniture place near us. And it got close and they were like, you know what? We're, we're just not really, not really feeling this. Like we want to have a holiday party for our, for our employees. But if there's an outbreak from our, from our party, our store is closed. Yeah, like like it's it's going to close our whole store, and we we cannot afford to close our store for three four weeks because we threw them a party, you know. And, and so like I could see, you know, that's one of those things where I could see some people being very leery. Like you know, if you've got a lot of those type of you know annual picnics or whatever they've got with the corporates, I, I would definitely say you know make sure that you've got a plan set up in case they run into that same type of situation of going, you know what, things got a little dicey right now. We don't want to run into the risk of having to, you know, having to shut down our company for X amount of time. You know, we may need to renegotiate something with you. And, and, and just, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to play the bad guy. I'm not saying you have to play the good guy. I'm just saying, be prepared for those, those types of phone calls because they very well might happen, you know, because we're seeing, you know, certain areas that are having upticks again. Yeah. Yeah. The, Somebody the, asked me, what is, asked me, do I have an RCN out in my area? What is an RCN out? Yeah. I, I think it's an RCN in your area. Like, I think it was like out in your area. Do you have this, whatever RCN is? What is RCN? Uh, I don't know. Royal Cola uh, non-toxic. Nightly. Nightly. RC um, Royal Cola Nightly. Do you have you have three cola not? <laughs> yeah, Mikey, Mikey, uh, what is the the RCN? And I, 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 I kind of draw. Uh, let's see, there was another uh, there Royal was... Canadian Nerds. <laughs> Sorry, Canadians. <laughs> I just and there goes RC... our there goes RCN. Our there, there's there's part of our viewership. Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> so well, just against MJ, they'll just like put a sticker over his. <laughs> yeah, they'll put, they'll maple, put leaf. His maple leaf. Yeah. Maple leaf. <laughs> maple leaf. <laughs> RCN cable. cable. What's an RCN cable? I, I have a prefer. feeling it's probably like Comcast or something like that. If I uh, maybe. You're talking cable internet? Fiber optic. No. I have no idea. I don't think we do. Yeah. I have Comcast because I can get the Comcast Wi Fi anywhere in the city. So I'm always connected to the internet no matter where I'm at. I get the same high speed at home, 
at gigs at clubs at bars the only place i can't get it is one room in the one casino that's way in the back it's the uh, um uh the big band room where they have it very set up for sound you know dampening of the sound the big giant stage and it's a little tough to get internet back there so no no rcn no royal canadian narcs <laughs> Um, yeah, when we were talking backups, somebody mentioned on Facebook about uh, networking uh, with the local, their local business friends or the local DJ friends. And I think that there's a, a level of that, but you get to a point where is, if this is in an area, I mean, the wedding that uh, that I did this past weekend, they didn't have any of their makeup or hair people because they they had been sick. Uh, another friend uh, had a wedding this past weekend in the area. He didn't have any photographers or videographers because they, in the weekend wedding the weekend before, had caught COVID from that wedding or whatever. Um, but they came down with it during the week, uh, the week of the this wedding. So um, those are those are. It's it's going to be one of those things that having that list, yes, is going to be a great thing and finding out who would be available and and to be uh, ready to call because it's definitely definitely a crazy time. And we always have the, you know, you always have this dates where it's like, oh man, everybody and their brother keeps calling me for this date. I've been booked for this date and everybody keeps calling me for this date. Um, guess what? They already called you and they didn't get you. So they called somebody else. Like, like this past weekend was the prom weekend for our area. Yep, same here. Every school that I can think of, with the exception of one who had a mess up by the venue, did their prom this weekend, either on Friday or on Saturday. And so, you know, I, I had another friend of mine who he was reaching out to me. He was looking for something like equipment wise, like he, he was able to do the event, but he had something, some kind of hiccup in his equipment. So he was calling around to get gear, like a, a piece of gear from people. And he's like, you know, I was, I would call a couple of people that I was sure they weren't working. So I could, you know, borrow from them and probably just throw them a couple bucks and they'd be happy. And he said, and they're working. And so it was, it was instantly like, he just re like that hit him just to the fact that these guys who don't even work that often were working that yeah. weekend. So, you know, if your only plan is the network of DJs, start thinking of that other backup because you might find yourself stuck in, you know, between a rock and a hard place. If you're, that's your only backup that you got. And it's actually been something we've been kicking around here uh, with with seeing if we can put together a network through uh, through our DJ and TV uh, community of having it where the ultimate backup is is uh, a fly in DJ that if because in many cases that there's you've got gear that, you know at the location or you can get gear to the location but it's really you need a competent body who can come in there with their laptop and plug in and, and perform. And uh, this is this is an idea we've been kind of working on and throwing around. Is that can this could this be an option for some people? Would this save an event in the, in a situation like that? I don't know. It's a it's an interesting an interesting thought. Uh, yes, it's going to cost more to fly somebody in on a Friday and fly them out on a Sunday type of thing. But if it's that or ruining someone's wedding and then them coming back and suing you because you had a contract to provide entertainment and you didn't. You know, where does the, uh, you know, when does that $2,000 to fly a DJ in and uh, do that, you know, is that a cheap $2,000 to, to uh, keep you out of, uh, out of a, a lawsuit of some sort? And save face and probably, you know, create a better, a better PR type of situation. Like, listen, I'm sorry, but I really cannot be at your event unless you want me getting everybody else sick. So here's what I'm willing to do. Oh my gosh, do you know what he did for us? We need to stop this whole thing about building portable DJ booths and and DJ pl DJ platforms for your controllers and build DJ COVID blocking booths that, that lock you in airtight and you can go do the gig and you won't get anybody <laughs> sick. That's and what then we live in them about. all week long so you don't get it around any of the other people. You just, you just else. drive up in a little golf cart like the Pope Mobile, DJ your thing, the arms out these little rubber things, DJ. <laughs> drive away, you're good. You wave the crowd. Telling you, know. forget all these places that are making the DJ booths and the DJ, you know, podiums. You need forget the, all that. The DJ bubble is what we need. <laughs> the DJ bubble. <laughs> uh, 
Well, guys, let's, let's kind of chat a little bit about uh, moving gear. And, and, uh, the, I mean, the topic that we're supposed to talk yeah, about tonight, let's, let's well, I wouldn't be ever we're, that. We're half hour we probably in. So. Should, we probably should set a, a, a one night a month to do open question like that, I think. Yeah, that, that would uh, that would be kind of a, kind of a fun night, especially when uh, yeah. when folks are coming from all angles. It's always kind of fun. Yeah. So when we get into and and nothing against the 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 Wednesday show with the virtual DJ, but when they're asking just one area of questions, then it becomes, you know, I don't know much about virtual DJ. Let's ask some Huey Lewis questions or something you know that's really important, and then we could have some fun talking. But no. Uh, so hauling gear, uh, this is this is something that with the price of gas going up has really uh, kind of reared its head. My typical vehicle that I use to haul my DJ gear is a big Dodge truck that sits right on the other side of that thing on the wall and right on the other side. Um, but it's a diesel. So that means right mm. now in Minnesota that it is over $5 a gallon is what uh, what I paid for <laughs> to fill the tank the other day. And it's not going to go down. I think I just saw that they were saying uh, it was it was around six dollars a gallon uh with the, with the, on the news tonight and of course it's going to go up so it becomes a thing is that okay how do we haul gear whether it's from the office or from your house to the show how do you deal with it once you're there um because it, going back to saturday this is my first first wedding or first show i did by myself uh this year and i had to move gear and of course John can't carry much for weight yet because I'm not supposed to have weight carrying weight and walking on that knee. So it became a way, how do you deal with that? So I wanted to get, uh, kind of get your, an idea of, of how, how you have been doing it, uh, it uh, guys, because you both are, you do a little bit different shows and you're carrying a little bit different, different types of gear in or different. Uh, yeah, I guess different types. We'll go with that. So tell us guys. Well, I would like to say an observation that I made today that I just want to make sure we point this out here. And it's <clears throat> every week I have to have my little disclaimer. And I think this is a good one. So try to hang with me on this. You know, when it comes to taking gear to places, you know, we're all kind of different. You know, I could get mine there in a big black truck. You could get yours in a 6'4 or a pink Cadillac that is chrome wheeled, fuel injected and stepping out over the line. But whatever you do. Make sure you have a license to drive, because if you don't, then you're going to have to come on and ride the train, the party train. Uh, you have to get your roll on, but don't don't you dare let them catch you riding dirty. Uh, make sure you have a getaway car or just ride in my Chevy with the white walls. Uh, but always remember, it's a Bentley to me, but to you, it's a blue car. Um, but, you know, sometimes you're going to end up driving me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln or the 409 or the little red Corvette or the little deuce coupe or my hoopty. Uh, but keep in mind, you should get your car washed because you definitely never want to have Maybelline or Mustang Sally uh, find you waking up in a new Bugatti. Um, so just get out on the road again, out on Route 66, the freeway of love or where the streets have no name. Um, but you will always find out that life is a highway. Uh, you have fast cars, and, and and I don't know why you can't drive just 55. So take a slow ride in your low rider. Uh, do not ask the Lord for a Mercedes Benz. Uh, watch out for grease lightning, and uh, you'll find out soon that you have been everywhere because you have fast cars and freedom. I don't know no, which I'm worried. It did not take me long to come up with that because my brain was just firing these <laughs> off. But here's the funny thing. I know at least three, probably more, but at least three immediately came to mind that were country songs. Yes. There, there were a couple in there. Yes. That, oh, there was more. The there fact, was a lot of country songs. I know there was. About trucks and But tractors. the fact it went like this, <laughs> you know more than you think. Yeah. I, I never said I wasn't educated with all types of music. I just said I don't want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right. So um, I don't know if you want me to go last about my vehicle because people are going to hate my gas mileage. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there is that. There is that. So, Dan. Uh, I re yeah, I recently <laughs> got a new vehicle. It's a hybrid truck. And no joke, um, I fill up about once a month. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't drive at all other than to your events. But keep in mind, right? well, I drive some, but still keep in mind that uh, on its average, it's supposed to get 
42 around the city because it runs a half off that electric motor and 33 highway. But if you drive what's called hyper and you just don't punch the gas, I mean, I've gotten many trips that me driving from my house to the venue that the little thing tells me I got over 50 miles per gallon. And that's actually more better gas mileage than my little one cylinder motorcycle can do. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, I, I had the previous car for 16 years. It was a two door hatchback. And trust me, I packed that thing to the end of the earth and back so many times. You've never driven a front wheel drive car until you've driven one that it feels like the, the front end is bouncing as you're steering because there's so much weight in the back. Um, so for me, just transportation is the new truck, uh, everything in the back or the back seats. And you talked about different gear and this is a perfect way to kind of take this, you know, to the next step that you guys want to, there are nights that, that I take speakers and, and the, my little DJ booth, the TV screen, all of that. And there are other nights that I go in with just a backpack with my laptop and headphones. So it, it, it's, it kind of depends sometimes what you're doing, what you can pull off. So mm -hmm. for me, I have to be a little versatile. So Dan, which direction have you gone recently with when it comes to hauling gear, like vehicle wise? So, so my my regular vehicle is is a Toyota Toyota Highlander, and I purposely got one that it would allow me to tow a trailer because I I've, I've got a six year old who's still in a car seat. The last thing I want to have to do every time I have an event is take the car seat out, fold down the seats, stuff everything in there. Um, just so that I can go do an event. And then you add in the fact that, I mean, we've talked about it before. I have the rolling booth that I do. Um, that's not fitting in, in a vehicle. Like no. that is not fitting in the back of my highlighter. Like it, no, no if ands, or buts about it, even without any gear. Um, so, so from that standpoint, I have kind of gotten to the point where, you know, this is a necessary evil. Yeah, we all talk about the fact that our gas prices are going up. And yes, it's going to cost us more to go to an event, especially for those of us that typically drive an hour, hour and a half, you know, two hours away. Um, and, and I'm not, I don't want to downplay it, but, you know, when you spend an extra dollar for gas let's assume for a second you get 20 miles to the gallon now i know like with what day having the e350 v10 <laughs> yeah, he's getting like two miles to the gallon um but, like a Bucati but engine right there for real <laughs> yeah. but when when you get you know let's say you get 20 miles to the gallon um that's costing you five cents per gallon per, per mile that you're driving so you know if you do 30 miles away it's an extra dollar 50. like you know some of us treat it when we're when we're you know we see these gas prices going up that oh my gosh that what used to cost me five dollars to get to my venue is now costing me 300. it's not that that to that level right so what i've done personally is just rather than focus on on, on the necessary evil which is i've got to get to my event this increase in gas is still cheaper than buying a different vehicle yes. for me. You know, and, and and as much as I might even, you know, I like my thought, I'm like, well, maybe I could go electric, but I the hauling the trailer is still the kind of the, the weird thing for some of those. And those vehicles are like way high, you know, in price. And you're towing, I've been reading a lot about electric vehicles by having the hybrid towing something dramatically drops your distance that you can drive like dramatically mm -hmm. exactly so or or even like they've got like the the ford transit like the vans they've now got an electric version of it there it's still not going to get me you know it's, it's not going to be what i need right and, and cost wise it's not gonna it's not gonna offset it so what i've done is i can't do anything about the distance to my event so what i'm doing is my regular day-to-day -day driving is saying, okay, let me, instead of making a trip to the bank and then to the grocery store, I'm going to wait to where I can do both of them in one trip. So I've, I've cut a couple miles here and I got a couple miles there. And in the end, it, it helps save because I can't save in my, in my trip. Um, now, I will say one of the things that I've also gotten to is, you know, certain, certain events, I would take the rolling booth and that was what I was going to use. But I've been also looking at some of my events going, you know what? They really didn't care if they wanted that or not. 
And if I don't take that, I can put my other booth and my speakers without taking the car seat out. I can put them all in the back of the Highlander. Now I'm not towing anything Mm -hmm. and I can get to the event using that. So if I have that option, um, then I've been using that. Uh, And again, trying to, trying to, you know, take out those unnecessary trips, trying to promote more with my couples. Hey, rather than meet on person, let's make it easier, right? Your schedule busy. Mine's real busy. Let's just do zoom, Mm -hmm. like not even play it off the fact that, you know, we're worrying about gas or anything else. Um, Just, you know, working those kind of things into helping with the day-to-day use. And I think that, that, the idea that sometimes we can go, we can be too frugal when it comes to, or be too concerned about that extra five cents a, a mile type of thing, as you were referring to, Dan. I think we can get to the point where we will. Uh, that it's it's yes, it is money, and yes, it does cost more. But if we fixate on that, then we're probably not focusing on growing our business or looking for an opportunity to connect with someone who may lead to a future sale, and and. I've run into that numerous times in my own career over when you're, you're so fixated on something that's really, you know, it's just part of what it is and it's a small aspect of what you do, but we fixate on that and then we miss opportunities. And I used to hear a lady in this city that uh, worked in the news team in one of the stations and she used to call um, PODB. She would always just say PODB price of doing business. Yeah. These are things that you, uh, um, you, you just have to consider part of doing business podb and i think i think uh, dan you mentioned it and uh somebody else uh, mentioned it, of course yeah or the day i think mentioned with the, the buying a new vehicle you know, everyone i've heard that numerous times is let's let's go to a cheaper vehicle to run or a newer that is a you know hybrid whatever it's there it's great if you need a vehicle and and you can go that route that's wonderful but it goes back to when i bought that diesel you know the the uh, my my friend who is a car dealer. He's like, you know, you can buy a lot of gas for the amount of extra you're going to pay for that diesel truck, and it was at the time I think it was close to four to, between four and five thousand dollars. And today, of course, yes, it does get it gets twenty about twenty four miles to a gallon loaded with DJ gear headed down the uh, freeway. That's pretty decent for what I'm hauling, but I probably, if you really look at it, haven't. Ma- had enough of a price difference between the the diesel you know especially with the diesel being more expensive now i probably am still upside down on that investment of the diesel engine but uh just recently cnet on youtube did two videos about comparing the two and they talked exactly what you talked about john that you can take you know what you're spending in gas as opposed to what you're now paying extra for car and they actually break down different things in that. So if you get a chance, if we're on CNET on YouTube, they did two different ones comparing the gas prices you put out, the price of the car, all that kind of stuff. And, and how it, it's strangely, depending, especially where you live, uh, can be worse. Because they were saying Hawaii, it's average 28 cents per kilowatt, where I think it was Utah or one of the Midwestern states was like 8 cents per kilowatt. Yeah. So depending on where you live and different things like that, you know, it's, it's even if it's even, even money for even money, it's, you have to kind of look beyond that too. And, and Tim makes a, you know, raise your price enough to cover the cost. Uh, and, and, and again, cost of doing business and yeah. our contracts. For me, I can't do that because yeah. mine are all fixed by the people that hire me. So. And, and for most of us, uh, you know, my contract is, was signed last year and it was based on the rates at that specific time. And I know some, some contractors and things in our central part of the United, uh, Minnesota have have now been adding a, sur- a surcharge. I haven't gone that to that route because it's you know yeah I still have some fudge. I'm not I might not be making ten dollars less per show. Whatever you know it's it's not a not a huge issue. It's not five hundred dollars less per show as of right now. So it's and then for next year obviously we're going to be figuring uh, we'll be basing uh, travel expenses and things on what we're seeing this year. And uh, it's just the way it will be. I think you're going to be, I, you know, anybody who's fixated on on a, a minuscule piece of what we have. Yes, you have to buy gas. You have to be able to get to the events, but it, it becomes a small portion, really. And and again, that you have no control over. So so you're better off to to fixate on the things with your business that. If you are a person who gets to 
determine your own price, find a way to make your worth better, make you worth more money. And if you're in a situation you know, like with MJ where you, you can't, you know, because it's set by somebody else, then you need to focus on your marketing in such a way that you're going to get more events. So you have a bigger quantity to kind of offset that. Mm-hmm. Um, or a little and bit I think- what I've done recently is be flexible in what you can do. You know, I, uh, for those, those of you who don't know that one casino I work at, I help out doing lights there. So nights that I'm not booked, I get to go there, you know, just by being flexible, not saying I'm only a DJ, you know, I'm going to go make a paycheck still in the business, still getting to network. Uh, flexibility, I told, talked about this so long ago that mm-hmm. how that, as much as I hate it, it it's so important. So sorry, Dan. I didn't mean to interrupt there. No, no, you're fine. You're good. You're good. Um, I was going to say something about we were talking, Dan. You had mentioned about um, what was it? Oh, I remember what it was. Uh, you have to think about also money in, money out. Okay, so which are you going to save more over? Gas prices when they lower, if they lower, or not eating out two times a week. When you go to do a gig, eat at home instead of on the way there, or drive home as opposed to stopping on the way home. You be, I, I'm telling you, the other day I went through, who was it? One of the fast foods. So I got a sandwich, fries, and a drink. Cost me 10 bucks. Me, by myself. So, Lord, it's you guys that have children. I mean, you have to sell kidneys sometimes. <laughs> I wonder. But look at things like that in your life. What can you cut out if you are struggling what can you cut out simple like that that can help you help your bottom line? And just I gotta I gotta rant for just a second here. One yeah. of my one of my biggest pet fees right now is the people who and, and I, I mean I'm sure we all have them on Facebook and you probably some of you are gonna be like, Oh, I guess that's me. I probably you know yeah. Dan's talking about me. But like we have like I have people who are friends of mine that are on Facebook who will complain nonstop about the gas prices, but will go sit in a line at Dunkin' or Starbucks. <laughs> in the drive through Okay. Because because a lot of ours, a lot now like some of our some of ours are open and you can go in. Our Dunkins are real weird right now. You you can go in and order, but you can't do it at the counter. Like it, it, you can pick it up and go. So a lot of people will sit in the line to the point we have lines into the street. Yeah. People are waiting 20 minutes in a drive through line and then they're complaining about gas prices after paying four or five dollars for their coffee. And here's Learn some, how to make it at home. Here's that's, something else to think about. Here's something else to think about. Exactly what Dan's talking about. Let's say you do have a vehicle that gets good gas mileage, and you're sitting in that line. While you're there, you're getting zero miles per gallon. <laughs> and there's why I'm using some. I love yeah. the hybrids. <laughs> yeah, mine shuts on and off constantly. So there's I sit there a lot and use it because the little battery thing. I can drive quite a bit without even the, the engine kicking on, but. For everybody else, uh, my friend Chuck used to talk about that. He'd see people go somewhere and just sit in the car and work with the heater on or the air conditioning on. He's like, they're getting zero miles per gallon. Why are they just, why don't they just shut it off and get out? Mm -hmm. Yep. Go find a shade tree or something. Yeah. Go in the store, go home. But there's little things like that, like Dan said, that, that you would not believe in a month how much those kind of things add up. But if you are at that point where things are pushed, you can do stuff about it immediately, but it's going to be... That latte that you have every day is you just got to figure out a way around it. That's for sure. Uh, Delivery. Forget forget having stuff delivered and tipping people. <laughs> Make it at home. But wait, isn't don't you get tipped yourself if you carry your own pizza? It's in? Dominoes. Yeah. That's Dominoes. Uh, you do you what? Pick it up yourself. Yeah, if you pick it up yourself and and you carry it in the house, all of a sudden you get a Domino's delivery hat that appears on your head. And maybe your shirt gets a logo or something. And then I think there's sprinklers that come on. And then you have to do this like ninja, you know, mission impossible thing and throw the pizza up in the air and duck through and catch it. And then elbow smash the neighbor or something. I, I don't remember. But anyway, and then you get $3. It's great. Um, that must be what you people who spend a lot of money on cable TV yeah. get to see. Because I've never seen that. That yeah. has to be a commercial, right? It's, it is. It, it is, is a commercial, yes. And it's it's on occasionally during the news, which is about all I watch. Yeah, I so I don't have any of that. Yeah, so. it's, it's silly. $40 a week for coffee. Oh, my goodness. Dang. That That's be- like close to my cell phone bill. And I have a big Good. cell phone bill. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah. going to throw it out. I spend $9 a month 
and I'm a lot and and I can get I probably get two iced coffees a day. Doing it yourself? No. There's a subscription place. Nine dollars oh. is all I pay. Now what are you doing? Goodness. Nine dollars, and I can stop. Yeah, like if anybody wants to find out, I'll give you the lowdown on it. It's it's a pretty yeah. good deal. Like I said, there are things if that if that is troubling, because trust me, we have all been in positions where finances are tight. You mm-hmm. are not alone. Don't feel ashamed. But there are things that you can do right now. Uh, my friend Chuck was the one. He was the president of one of the local credit unions. And he would talk about, you know, people that he would uh, consult with. And, they, you know, he would be at their house and they would have like two boxes of pizza setting there and this and that. And he's like, I can just count up about 100 bucks right here. They could have saved as mm-hmm. opposed to trying to get financial advice. Yeah. You know. It's up to you. Let's let's. Uh, I want to hit a couple more things uh, quickly. We'll do this. Uh, Dan mentioned trailers, and somebody else mentioned trailers also. Uh, positives and negatives with that, depending upon where you live. It's nice in a case like my area. I can leave the gear in a trailer. I don't have to unload the truck if we need the truck for something, and go that route. Obviously, the gas mileage is a huge issue. That cuts your gas mileage down on whatever vehicle you're running. Um, that's a part. Security is also a concern when you have a trailer. If you're depending upon where you're at, um, out here, you know, I'm going to have a raccoon is going to go and attack my trailer or the the gray fox that comes through the yard. Yeah, it's, we're pretty safe out here. But in many areas, uh, trailers are susceptible to uh, break-ins and many insurances, insurance companies, if you are insuring your gear that way, do not cover it in a trailer without some stipu- without things going on. So it's certainly a, a concern there, as is leaving your gear in the, your, your vehicle out at the street overnight can also um, be, be uh, an insurance issue if you go that route. Um, you it's know, trucks pain they, to back up. Yeah, there's, there's just a lot of, a lot of little nuances there. So, um, and then, of course, carts. We could, we could have talked about carts and hauling gear that way, but I think we're gonna just going to pass on that for tonight because we are pretty much up against the end. So, um, carts. I found our topic for next week. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say carts, four wheels and a handle. Okay, next. Yeah, oh, come on now. There's some that have like two handles. I will give you advice really quick on carts that everyone gave me. Don't buy the smallest one. No, I'll be fine. No, you really shouldn't buy the tiniest one. No, it'll be fine. I shouldn't have bought the tiniest one. That's Listen, if you got if you got one that has a TV on it, some handles, and be able to hold all your gear, it doubles as both. It it needs bigger wheels, and there's just no room. I can't. It's rough on like just going through the carpeting at the casino. I feel like I'm pushing a, a truck. It's <laughs> it's challenging. Yeah, they can be. They can be. Anyway, got sorry. So, um, up next. Up next, uh, Howie, uh, Howie and uh, DJ Scrap are going to be talking here at, at 10 o'clock Eastern. That's at djntv.com slash chill. And then uh, well, tomorrow night we'll have a, 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 a the Tuesday Night Music Show at 10 o'clock Eastern and the chill room. Uh, again, djntv.com slash chill. And then we'll have one of our uh, pre-recorded shows that will be going on at 9 o'clock. There have been questions about uh, when Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe is going to be coming back. We will be bringing that back in the fall. One of the reasons we kind of put it off is because every show became kind of as we started this one talking about that, you know, gear that's not going to be available for months. And it's still that way. So it's like we really don't have anything to talk about that is outside of, you know, this is what an XLR is and this is how you plug an XLR into something else. Um, and those are still valuable shows. But if we have to, we're going to save those for our poll schedule if there's no gear to talk about. Uh, so, but we'll be after Labor Day, uh, Tuesday night with Ben Stowe, we'll be back on the schedule. So, anything else, guys? Next Monday? Monday. Next Monday is our, our uh, monthly training night. That's right. Uh, we've got that, djntv.com slash virtual expo. You can go check that out. Um, what I did is I, I went to some of the folks who had been putting together some really cool promotional things for their shows, and and I want to get some tips from them on what you can be doing now in 2022 at your events to be able to get really cool things to be able to use for your 2023 and 2024 marketing what they're looking for, what they do, how they capture some of the stuff they capture. So we've got uh, we've got four people who have been kind of following, who have been doing a really nice job with that. Um, so we're going to get to uh, hear them. Uh, so we've got uh, uh, Don Carlo, uh, Aaron. Um, Aaron's going to come. He's a new uh, new guy you guys are going to get to meet from Rochester, down in the Rochester area. Um, Jason Jana is doing it, and Jim Sroan. All four of them have been doing some really cool promotional things, and they're going to show you a little bit about what they've been doing, and, and then we're going to talk about how uh, and what they look for to capture to get those cool things. So, yeah, 
next Monday night. That'll be at awesome. 8 o'clock Eastern. Very cool. Okay. NTV.com slash chill. Putting it into the, into the chat. Da, da, da. Okay. All right. I think well, on that note, thank you guys very much for taking uh, time out of your night to come join us. Um, you know, hopefully we weren't too much of a downer, but, but maybe it was a wake up call for you. Who knows? In any way, shape or form that was, uh, we hope you, you enjoyed the show and you learned something along the way. Have yourself a great night and we'll see you next time.